Sonar Wars is heating up. I think I just invented a new swim bay color. And a catch photo release derby loophole exposed. Got that and more coming up right now on Target Wally's Top 5 presented by Seafoam. Let's dive on in. Number 1. This big bluegill was caught with central Minnesota guy Garrett's fear and it's got a little something strange going on. Can you spot what it is? I'll give you a hint. It was a popular hairstyle back in the mid 80s. Ding 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 ding. Rat tail is the correct answer. And I would totally be calling that thing an 11 and a half incher if I was the one who caught it. Definitely one of the better rat tails I've ever seen other than this one. <laughs> Yikes. Speaking of unique tales, that brings us to number two. Catch photo release derbies are all the rage right now. I love to see it. Basically, you're not hauling those fish all around the lake and toting them up to a weigh-in. You're catching that fish, you're getting a measurement of it on a ruler with a photo and letting it go right away. Most of these tournaments have some sort of a length to weight conversion chart, so a walleye that is X inches long will weigh X pounds and it's consistent for everybody. Now imagine catching a walleye like this during a length-based tournament. I mean, that's basically got a pheasant tail. I wonder how many spots that would bump you up in the rankings. Or how about this one tagged by fisheries biologist Becca Perry out of Buffalo Pound Lake in Saskatchewan. Those are some interesting looking backsides that I would love to have in my five fish bag. Number three. We've got some more news in Sonar Wars. No doubt electronics companies have been going back and forth one-upping each other, which is good news for us. That's gonna help keep costs in check and will force them to push the envelope with new and better technology for us. One of those new technologies that was just outed is Humminbird's Mega Live Imaging Target Lock, which in my opinion solves the biggest problem or debate in forward-facing sonar right off the bat, and that is should I mount it on my trolling motor or should I put it on a separate pole over the side of the boat? Both have their own pros and cons, there's really no right answer. But this new target lock is essentially the best of both worlds. It allows you to control your trolling motor and your live forward facing sonar transducer in unison, or you can move them independently of each other, which is even just hard to do with my hands, <laughs> but it gets better. So that target lock feature allows you to actually lock that mega live beam in the direction of structure or maybe where the pot of fish is, so that if that boat is shifting, drifting, if you're spot locked, and maybe the wind or boat waves is kind of pivoting you on that point you're locked on, it'll continue to point that beam in the direction of structure and line up those casts for you. So you know that you're gonna be able to see your bait all the way back to the boat. Oh, and in a very related side note, I will now be mowing lawns and shoveling driveways until I save up enough coin to get one of those units. Number four. Let's keep the electronics train a rolling. Choo choo! It was so loud and lame. Oh, I'm a loser. Garmin just announced their new LiveScope XR, which stands for Extended Range, and that baby can shoot up to 500 feet ahead of the boat and mark fish in real time or structure. And it can also shoot much deeper than original live scope versions, which had me kind of originally thinking that this was geared towards saltwater folks or maybe salmon or trout fishermen. But I can definitely see a bunch of crossover into the walleye world. I'm specifically talking about walleyes that are suspended out over basins, cruising mid water column out over open water. And those are usually the biggest walleyes in the system. And up until recently have by far been the hardest to pattern target catch. I mean, imagine going to say Lake Erie, being able to scan 500 feet ahead of the boat and see where those massive megapods of fish are at. It's going to be ridiculous. So this is pretty cool. I was just scanning around, messing around out in the deepest part of the lake and I found a sailboat. That brings us to number five. I just found my new favorite swim bait color, but I don't think it exists yet. <laughs> Apparently we have these colorful little buggers in some Minnesota waters that are called rainbow darters. News to me. Now they're mostly in clear rivers and streams in southeastern Minnesota, like Cannon, Zumbro, Root, Cedar. They've also been found in Lower St. Croix and tributaries of the Minnesota River, Otter Tail Rivers, and even a lake down by Minneapolis. 
If you're somehow able to get your hands on one, they are illegal to use as bait. We've reached a final conclusion on item nine. Illegal! Which probably means they work really well, right? <laughs> Isn't that how that works? Alexa, add a nano blue color Sharpie to my cart. You got it. Oh, and some of those Berkeley power bait the champ swimmers in that nasty HD fire perch color. Playing that nasty 80s fire playlist. Thanks, Alexa. That wraps up this week's top five. Big shout out to Seafoam for keeping us running smooth and making this video series possible. Make sure you check them out at seafoamworks.com. And if you want more walleye and ice fishing content like this, sign up for the free Target Walleye emails at targetwalleye.com. I'll see you back in seven days.